This video is sponsored by PCBWay. So I haven't really seen very unique setups in a very long time. And I think it's kind of a shame because when you build something that's very far outside of the box, then you start to realize quite a lot of things about a more standardized setup that you might want to create, right? So that's really why I started this project. I uh, still had this piece of wood laying in my storage compartment downstairs. It was first for the e-board charging station video that I did like a long time ago. Then it turned into an art installation for my graduation project. And ever since then, it hasn't really found its way uh, back into to usefulness, so to say. And so I wanted to reuse it. There's quite a lot of holes in this thing though, so we're gonna have to fill up quite a lot of stuff and, and uh, yeah, fix it up. But it will serve as a nice little slate for a really conceptual desk setup. And so once it was all taken apart, I really started holding the control panels in place, trying to figure out a nice yeah, location to put these things, like what kind of interface would we be using. The conclusion I kept coming down to is that it would be really nice to have it like voice activated. And that way we wouldn't really necessarily need a keyboard on this thing. Which in the end obviously turned out to be a mistake. I mean, it's a very idealistic idea to have. And I did actually reach out to Keychron, so in the next video, we are integrating a really awesome keyboard, so if you want to see that, that's also pretty cool. But at this moment in time, I thought the voice activation idea was pretty good, so I started modeling everything out in the uh, CAD software. This mostly revolves around creating a, a new case for the Audio Box Go, which is an audio interface I've been using for a couple of years now. It's very reliable and it works very nicely. So that we could slide that into the side because it's not able to fit in the top. And also just all the inlays for, you know, the DaVinci Resolve, SuperSpeed Editor, the LibDeck CT, and anything else we really need. I send that off to PCBWay. They offer a lot of services like CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, PCB production and assembly, and of course also 3D printing. And this time I'm also printing this stuff in resin, in UTR Black, because that's also what we printed the DaVinci Resolve SuperSpeed Editor in. So yeah, definitely check them out. I left a link in the description down below and also a link to the project page where I'll upload all the files for the STLs for this project. In terms of design, I want to chamfer the edges with a circular saw, but that also means the audio box go placement needs a little indent right over here. Now it's pretty important that we do these cuts before we actually make the chamfer over the entire desk setup because otherwise we can't go past the rotor jigsaw anymore. You know, I wasn't expecting this cut to go so well because of the, the blades, because they're not fine cut. But in the end, there wasn't that much of a terror at all, so that was quite nice. At the rear here, we also have a mounting point, like a little indent on both sides for scaffolding tubing, for scaffolding tube mounts. And then these are monitor arm poles cut down. And so the way I went about this was actually first marking out where the chamfer would go and then like determining uh, the depth that we would need to jigsaw out our piece. Uh, after this, yeah, it turned out quite nicely. I drilled some holes in this thing. Didn't do a very good job at the holes though because I was trying to do this really quickly. I got a lot of tear out on the other side as well, which is just, yeah, that sometimes happens. You don't really see it though. It's on the inside of the desk, so it doesn't matter that much. It's not the most beautiful solution, is it? Well, if you have any ideas for how to make this better, then you know, let me know in the comments. I'm sure somebody has a way better solution than this. This is going to allow us to mount the microphone on this side. So the entire desk setup is voice activated and you don't have a keyboard to control this thing. So if you're enjoying the video so far as well, definitely consider subscribing. If you don't subscribe, then you might never see another one of my videos because it doesn't end up in your suggested feed. And yeah, you might miss something. But uh, after this, I started marking out where we would need to cut everything out with the jigsaw. What I hadn't really realized though is that this wood is actually a little bit thinner than what I'm normally working with. So this is 45 millimeters instead of 50 mil. And that means that the jigsaw blade was actually hitting the bottom of the, the piece as well. And so there's like a lot of marks uh, after the jigsaw run, which isn't that big of an issue, but um, I hope the jigsaw is okay after that. And uh, so this is the part where I nearly ruined the build. This was actually a day before I would receive the parts from PCBWare and was like, oh, if I mess something up now, it's gonna be a really big issue because I've already like received the, the parts from the sponsor. And so what I tried to do was I made the chamfer with the jigsaw. And the jigsaw blade, of course, is a lot more flexible. So it started traveling its own path. 
to the point where it went way too deep. And uh, yeah, if we jumped for the other side, the entire build would would be ruined. I went past the river circus, so gave it a proper jump for that, which we should have done in the beginning. And really try to assess the damage and see how we can fix it. So this really sucks, like the jigsaw blade kind of went its own path and you know this is where it's supposed to be going and it just went all the way down here. In the end it wasn't that big of a deal, I just like jigsawed it completely off and then sanded it down. It looks quite okay, like it's at the bottom of the piece anyway so you, you'd really have to look for it to, to find it and in the end it kind of looks like a design choice as well. But I am really happy that I actually made this mistake because if I had made this mistake on a bamboo desk, for example, that would have been a lot more expensive to deal with. So before painting, I also went past it with some wood filler and I didn't really have like the proper wood filler laying around, which is like the colored version. But I'm not entirely sure if that's necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it looks okay. In my opinion, at least. Like, let me know in the comments what you think. Should I like paint it or maybe I should have done something differently. I, I'm always learning from the comment section, so let me know if you had an idea about this. So the next morning, the 3D printed parts from PCBWay arrived. The print quality with them is always really awesome, and on this project as well, we weren't really able to do this on our own printer because uh, the DaVinci Resolve super speed editor is too large to be printed on my print bed. And in terms of like consistency as well, uh, I couldn't really notice that there was any difference between the prints that, that we did like a couple of weeks ago and the prints that they delivered now. So that's really awesome. Like if you want to do a project like this in segments, then you don't have to worry about, you know, the color being different for, for next uh, iteration or something like that. I did have some other prints that I printed myself, like the holders for the legs, which are actually at the bottom of the setup. And I still had these laying around from a different setup, so I could reutilize those. The legs that we're using actually are from FlexiSpot and they're actually sponsoring the channel for a future video. So this wasn't a sponsored like placement or anything but I do really appreciate FlexiSpot legs because they're very easy to uh, integrate into one of these builds just by you know flitch mounting it into the setup. In terms of the audio bus go it's very easy to take apart you just pull off the little knobs at the top and then you can pull off the front piece as well uh, after that it just slides out. The only concern I really have about this is um, I don't know if there was any like protection in the main casing against interference for some reason. I'm not it looks like a piece of plastic to me, but it might be something in there. And I fit in there quite snug, I thought it wasn't going to fit, but I really had to like kind of wiggle it into position. Yeah, there was enough room there for all the cables to go past without too much interference, so to say. In terms of the design of the inlays as well, on the old setup I actually had it that there was an extra piece on the underside, which clamped it together. And what would start to happen is during colder months, the setup would kind of contract or something and those 3D printed pieces would start to move. Uh, so it felt very cheap, you know, you, you would try to activate something on like a loop deck or something and then that panel would move, it wasn't really nice. On this one I'm just using some uh, screws to put it into place. I do want to switch out the screws for some black ones pretty soon but I couldn't really find any that were very small. So I also mounted some monitor arm poles to the scaffolding tube mounts at the back. I used a little 3D printed piece in the center just to, you know, keep it centered and two washers and that's just to keep it more stable. If you really want to go that extra mile, you could like paint the, the washers black or something. But that allows us to, you know, mount this monster arm mount which I've converted into a microphone arm. And that has worked out quite nicely over the years. But I would really like to buy like a low profile a microphone arm from Elgato or something like that so that we can have a little bit more reach and uh, the spring tension is quite high on this monitor arm so sometimes it just like flies up. So at this point I also tested out the setup with a monitor just to check out like okay if stuff doesn't work out can we still edit the videos in a normal way right? Uh, the main idea is that we use this projector which is a 4k projector from Anchor I believe or Nebula it's called had it for a while and I don't really use it that much. Later down the line though, I'd really like to see if it works out with, for example, a VR headset like the Apple Vision Pro. Maybe like Apple Vision Pro version 5 or something like that. So you can have virtual screens, but still physical controls and, you know, a good microphone, good keyboard, that kind of stuff. So that's kind of where we're leaving this video off, but you can 
pretty much directly after this one, go binge watch the next one. In that video, we're integrating the Keychron Q11 keyboard, doing some minor adjustments, finishing it up to, to a point where it's actually usable. And maybe there's a video after that as well, which will go over the functionality and really showcasing the setup, that kind of thing.